This is Adam Ellick reporting from Cairo. Egyptians went to the polls Saturday in the nation's first fair vote in decades. No. To better understand what's at stake, I caught up with Sharif Barakat, an Egyptian who I first met in North America. We want a new constitution, not a few changes. Say no in the referendum. I knew him as a working professional, but now, with his country on the line, he's playing hooky. They pretty much got it figured out. Sharif didn't show up, referendum in two days. I'm a cardiologist. Sharif and his friends have spent the past week campaigning across working class neighborhoods. Uh, the days of online activism and Facebook activism are over. It's only reaching a small segment, so we've got to hit the streets. You've already given so much to it, you don't want to see it all go to waste. Saturday's referendum is to amend the old constitution that existed under Mubarak. Liberals like Sharif are voting no. They want an entirely new constitution. It legitimizes dictatorship. It gives the president ridiculous power. His opponents, Islamic organizations, and Mubarak's former ruling party. Because these groups are more organized, they want to amend the constitution and quickly hold elections. Everyone, and I mean everyone, wanted to talk about their newest hobby, politics. <laughs> including officers who aren't even allowed to vote. Imagine two months ago, someone stopping you in traffic and talking about the Constitution. No way. Is that like uh, age group now respects our opinion? They never did before. Are you surprised at the appetite of the people? Very surprised. See, there's a cab reversing. Sharif seemed like a professor. His class, Democracy 101. These guys came up to us and they said, why are you telling us to say no? Shouldn't you be giving us the freedom to decide? Like many Egyptians, this woman wants a new government as soon as possible because she's worried about instability. What is she saying? A new constitution will take too much time. But it won't. Sharif's operation is meager compared to the Brotherhood, the country's largest Muslim organization that's warning that an entirely new constitution could leave out Islamic laws. They're definitely steps ahead of us when it comes to the, like, their they presence are. on the streets. They're organized. There are many more in numbers. I mean, there's been money and effort that's gone into this. In fact, the banner in the background is promoting constitutional classes by an Islamic group. Some people fear these groups. He said uh, the Muslim Brotherhood are going to get too powerful if these pass. It's going to turn into Afghanistan. As the day came to an end, we would learn a harsh lesson about Egypt's infant democracy. The young man in the black jacket is named Ahmed. When I shut off my camera, Ahmed punched Sharif's friend. A crowd formed, and we were all detained by police. Just before Mubarak was ousted, his party launched a desperate propaganda campaign, accusing foreigners of plotting the revolution. Ahmed believes the conspiracy, and he didn't like Sharif's flyer. Just two months ago, distributing flyers was unheard of and often meant being arrested. The police were more concerned with the flyers than the punch. Egypt may be rapidly changing, but in this case at least, the police reflex was still to restrict even the most modest display of political expression.